back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about neuropsychology, your favorite topic. I know you guys really enjoy watching these videos about neuropsychology that you get to have a bit of a grasp of the field and I thought it would be interesting for you to basically get to know a bit more of the field from my eyes and the things that I've learned through the process of becoming a clinical neuropsychologist. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing I want to talk about is books. I want to recommend two different books. The first one is the one that I got to know and use when I started studying neuroscience. I didn't study psychology myself, but neuroscience and neuropsychology are super intertwined as well. And a book that for me was really useful to be able to understand the brain and its functioning in a really clear way is this book that I'm going to put over here. And I used this book through my studies from the first year to the last year of my bachelor's. It was super useful. It's written in a way that even if you don't know a lot about neuroscience, you're able to understand everything they're talking about and it has a lot of images that also are super explanatory not just like decoration. The next book is a book that was recommended to me in my masters in clinical neuropsychology and it's this book over here. It's in Spanish but they have it also in English. It's basically an atlas for anatomical cuts and it's for MRI and also they just do on the other side the images so you can see how it would look like in the MRI and how it looks in a really pretty drawing with color so you are able to see it perfectly and contrast these two. I think it's super useful for a student to be able to see images like this in the computer when a patient comes in and be able to identify the areas that are relevant to this patient. So I really recommend having an atlas like this, it's also pretty small so it's easy to carry around in the hospital. My next recommendation is having a notebook. I also would suggest having a notebook like this size or even a bit smaller that if it ideally would fit in your white coat pocket. The reason why is because also my supervisor recommended this to us, to have a notebook to be writing down things that you see in patients that are interesting to you or super relevant. Like for example, if I saw a patient that had really interesting symptoms or something that to me was more outstanding and I wanted to learn more, it's a good way to write things down and also when you are learning how to do these protocols, you can write everything down, how you do it, how to approach the patient. It's a really good way of keeping track of everything you see in the hospital because in the end when you leave the hospital you're gonna forget about these patients. The next thing I want to talk about is something from my experience and the things that I've learned being with patients myself. First of all, the supervisor allows us to be with her in the room and we are able to see how she communicates with the patient, what tests she does and so on and at some point she allows us to be the one interviewing and doing the screen tests with the patients. So the things I've learned through these months being in a hospital is that it is really important to make sure the patients are comfortable and then you are approachable to them so they are able to explain to you their symptoms and they feel that it's a safe spot for them to talk. The reason why this is so important is because the way I do screenings and clinical neuropsychologists do screenings is based on the patient and how collaborative this person is. If the patient doesn't want to talk to you because maybe you don't seem too approachable, it's not going to be good for their screening test. So as obvious as it seems, it is pretty important for you to make a connection with them and them to be able to communicate with you. In the end, you have to make sure that the patient is looking at you and they're understanding the instructions that you're giving to them and the best way of knowing that is being face to face and making sure there's eye contact. But something that I also learned through these months is that it's super crucial for you to be able to read in between the lines. Most of the time people that come in the hospital are older people and they don't think they have any memory issues, they don't think anything is wrong with them, but when you start reading in between the lines and the person that is sitting next to them, for the things that they are saying you are able to see that maybe what they are saying is not exactly the truth and that's the thing that for me took me the most time to grasp because you need a lot of practice to be able to see what is missing and what you can interpret from this that they are saying and from that that they are saying and connect these two things into one thing and say okay this person could potentially have this let's try a test in relation with this and see what happens. Something different from being with the patients in the hospital environment is to take advantage of the research opportunities. Most of the times 
there's always a research opportunity for you so even if it's not the most amazing topic maybe you don't think that's the topic for you just talk to the supervisor of this specific research and see if you get along with this person is it something that you could do that maybe is more interesting from your perspective than what they are proposing just you know it's a really good way in my opinion to build connections within the hospital and within this whole field. It's just a really good way of making connections, of trying to get your name out there, not that you're gonna publish anything because maybe you don't end up publishing anything, but out there in the field, in the hospital, in between a few people, it's a good way of starting to get your name a bit more going, in a way. The best way of learning is watching somebody that has been in the field for many many years, how they deal with different type of patients and the most interesting thing in this job is that every day is a lottery you don't know who's gonna show up through the door and who is gonna be your next patient so that was the end of the video thank you so much for watching I hope that it was useful for you in case you're interested in pursuing this career to understand a bit more of the things that I've learned through this whole process of becoming a clinical neuropsychologist I'll see you in the next video bye